For the life of Elsie, to be one I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who care will live. We brought nothing into this world and it is certain we shall carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Gather the hymn through all the changing scenes of life, in trouble and in joy. The praises of my God shall still my heart and tongue employ.
Amen. And please be seated for prayer. <clears throat> Let us go to the throne of God in prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious God, return to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement, praying that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace, so that even as we mourn the death of one whom we knew and loved, we may not be overcome by this trial, but we may hold fast, trusting in your goodness and mercy. Assure us, O Lord our God, that death is not the end of those who trust in you. And may our hearts be so composed in the Holy Spirit that all fear and bitterness may be swallowed up in the light and peace you give to your troubled children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, have given us the pledge of eternal life, lift us, we pray, above our present distress and sorrow, and shed the light of your grace and glory upon us, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are met in this solemn moment to commend Elsie Doreen Johnson into the hands of the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer, by whose stripes we are healed, and in whose name alone we have salvation. Let us then recall to mind the life of our deceased sister by uh, Maurice, her son, and then this will be followed in humble trust as we hear the words of Holy Scripture recorded in Psalm 23. First, Maurice. Good morning. Good morning. Just over 92 years ago, a precious angel was born to Fix Herbert and Latina Broom at Chaka Hall in the parish of St. Lucy. This beautiful angel, whose life we are celebrating today, many know as Elsie or Mrs. Johnson. However, we, her close friends, family and friends, call her by many other loving monikers, Ma, Mum, Mummy, Mother, Grandma, Grandmother, Else, Kellogg's, Old Queen, Mistress Johnson. Ma came to live in Payne's Bay at quite an early age. I was primarily raised by an older sister. I was the norm in large families at that time. She received her early education right next door and eventually went through the hotel school and went on to establish herself in the hospitality industry within a few housekeeping departments until her retirement in 1994. During her illustrious career, her calm commitment to excellence saw her receive many Employee of the Month and Employee of the Year awards. 
A significant number of her long-term friendships were forged during these decades in the tourism industry. Post-retirement, she then immersed herself deeper into the work of the church, where she and her sister Esme, her trusted compatriot, assisted in the cleaning of the church, along with numerous other offices. She especially engrossed in the Bible fellowship and the women's league activities. Mommy was known to be captivated by Brother St. Hill's setting of homework and enjoyed the challenge to do the requisite research. Mom was a class leader and a secretary to the Bible Fellowship Group. Her acumen for the birthday record keeping was second to none. She loved her church and really went all out for all of its festivals, in particular, harvest, Easter, and Christmas. Preparation for the annual harvest, for instance, meant that her presence at the church preceding night was standard to give moral and other support. On the home front, it gave her immense joy to engage with and entertain members of the family, especially when her nephews Alvin and Bob, whom she assisted in rearing, visited from overseas, both of whom sadly predeceased her. Mother will often say, the broom men love real flower, you know. So she will always bake sweet bread and present to them. I was always amazed also at how she could rearrange the pot to ensure there was a share for others, especially her other favorite nephews, Ivan and Roosevelt. One never went hungry in her household. Her excellent culinary acumen was legendary. Where pudding and sauce, corn keys, sweet bread, and cassava porn were some of her trademark dishes. These she always shared with friends and family, and of course, her bread fruits. Punctuality, alas, that was her hallmark. She didn't like waiting on people. She became extremely agitated and filled with angst. Please note, however, though I, this was mostly directed at me, we all knew she always set her timepieces 15 minutes fast. Mistress Johnson loved to dress, to match, to look good. She was known for her outstanding hats, which she carried with elegant poise. Her interactions with people of all stripes came naturally. She made friends easily. Else did live and work briefly in the USA, where she was able to meet up with her longtime friends, Edna Thorpe Boyce, Gailita Hall Murray, as well as her cousin, Emily Green, better known as Grace within the family circle. Those grand ladies had a wonderful time together during those meetings. Now, going to funerals was something she did with such regularity that we would joke and say she could open her own funeral home. After these occasions, we would reluctantly have to listen to the running commentary on what details transpired. Elsie was altogether an amazing individual, a working professional, a loving housewife to Walter, a devoted mother to us, a wonderful grandmother, to our children. As a member of the large Brooms and Blackman clan of the St. Lucie, she inculcated a real sense of family and belonging, especially among her many siblings and their connections. Her personality was such that though she was dedicated and worked very hard, she always had a cheerful demeanor. She was incredibly kind, charitable, and went all out for others without fuss or fanfare. We can conclude that she experienced a life well lived. I call her the quiet matriarch. Rest in peace, mommy. We love you.
you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Can we please stand for the glory? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you. Kindly remain standing as we shall continue this service of thanksgiving with the singing of the hymn, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me.
kindly be seated as I invite Ariel Johnson to read the epistle, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 to 27, followed by Nola McLean, who will read the gospel. The Bible reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at the 20th verse. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he has over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says, all things are put in subjection, it is plain that this does not include the one who put all things in subjection under him. The word of the Lord. The Gospel according to John chapter 11, verses 17 to 27. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their mother, brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ, O oh Lord. We sing together the hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long.
This morning we gather to say a final farewell to Elsie Doreen Johnson. In normal circumstances, many would have come to comfort Palma Maurice Sherlin at the loss of your mother, to comfort Enid and Ekings at the loss of sister, to comfort Kyle and Sheena and Ariel at the loss of Gran. But there are restrictions and we need to respect them. Nevertheless, as we have come together in this place and virtually in this time of loss, let us place our trust in God. He grants to us grace so that through this scene of life which has changed so much for us, we may find comfort in this our time of grief. And God gives to all of us the hope through the triumph of Jesus over death and the grave. As we all know, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is the foundation of our faith. And we thank God for Elsie, a woman of faith. Elsie, as a believer, would have peacefully transitioned from life on this earth to life with her Savior. May we today witness to our faith as we enable God, who is our refuge and strength in moments like these, to support and keep us during this time as we continue to adjust to life without the presence of Elsie whom you knew and who you love. On behalf of the officers and members of this Pains Bay congregation and the wider community of faith of Methodists um, through her, um, the organization of the Women's League and Women's Fellowship, and on my own behalf, I offer my condolences to every one of you and assure you of the prayerful support in this time of grief. Let us pray. Most gracious God, 
You are author and finisher of our faith. You are present with us in times when we are experiencing challenges and trouble. And like the psalmist, we can say you are our refuge and strength in times like these. And so God, as we lay this family before you today, we are trusting you, Lord God, to touch each of them at their points of need so that they will know and feel you near. And now, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. In the gospel reading, there is a question which arises. The question is this. Was the death of Lazarus expected? Here are the words of Martha on arrival of Jesus. Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. As we examine this scripture in its context, it is revealed earlier in the passage that Lazarus was sick and that it was deemed necessary to send word to Jesus, his friend, whom the sisters knew could help in their time of need. When Jesus heard about the illness of his friend, the scripture reveals that Jesus said this sickness will not end in death of Lazarus. So the question arises again. Is this why Jesus stayed and did not journey immediately to the place to be with Lazarus during the final moments of his sickness? As the word unfolds, note that Jesus had mentioned to the disciples that Lazarus fell asleep and that he would go to wake up his friend. But the disciples did not understand Jesus' word. For Jesus, the falling asleep was in death. While the disciples thought he was speaking of a simple slumber. Then Jesus himself broke the news that Lazarus was already dead. So with his revelation that he was going to awaken him, there is no doubt that Jesus' delay would have been for a specific purpose. As a matter of fact, we discover that this was to be yet another teaching moment for his disciples. For in the presence of Jesus the divine, the old powerful son of God, a new experience of who he was coming to the life of his followers. It was to be a new ground for believing. In other words, a new ground for faith. The disciples just could not miss what Jesus will do after arriving four days after the passing of his friend for whom he went. You should note that going to where Lazarus was would have been dangerous for the disciples to go with Jesus. And our friend Thomas said it in the verse just before the appointed reading for today. He said, let us go that we may die with Jesus. A sign of loyalty, maybe. But the deeper aspect of this resurrection narrative 
is for us to acknowledge and believe that the resurrection of Lazarus from the dead was true. Jesus' power over death was real. It could not be missed by the disciples who were present then as eyewitnesses. In this journey called life, as part of our human experience, we often pass through some valleys like those of Martha and Mary. Sometimes in our experiences with the illness of family members, it seems that God is either not answering our prayer or he is not answering the way we want. And so, as a people who trust in God, we wait. We stand on the word of God, which assures us that in the end, God will meet our needs according to his timing and purpose. In these experiences, those whose faith is composed in the Lord, the Lord helps us to learn how to cope through the human experience of the psalmist who has every confidence in God in times of trouble. The psalmist who declares the Lord is his strong protector. The Lord God who is ever present and all knowing who knows every thought, every word, every action that we will take before we even think it. Nothing is hiding from him. And so God knows the pain each of us is going through today as we prepare to lay Elsie in her final resting place. Is it not good to know that God is with us in every situation and therefore he is with us in this time when we grieve for our loved one who is asleep in death. For indeed, Elsie is asleep in death. And there is that blessed assurance that as a believer, she will be awakened when Christ returns. And so death, my friends, is not the end for Elsie. And by faith we have every confidence that your mother, Palma and Maurice and Sherlon, your grandmother, Kyle and Sheena and Ariel, your sister, Enid and Eakin, will be raised up. The question is, do we have faith as Martha who said that her brother will be raised up on the last day and we know within our hearts and do we know within our hearts do we have every confidence that on the last day Elsie will be raised up in the resurrection at the end time for though in this time we have to wait. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, who has power over death and life, Jesus, who is creator of life, can restore life. And to us who believe in Christ, as one writer helps us to understand, that we have a spiritual life that death cannot conquer. And so as John 14 and verse 19 expresses it, before long, the world will not see me anymore, but his disciples will see him. Because Jesus lives, we also will live. For us today, what does this mean? It should mean that when we live by God's standards, he will not leave us. He comes to us, and because he is with us, he will be with us through it all. 
Let him write our pens. Through it all, through it all, I have learned to trust in Jesus. I have learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I have learned to depend upon God's word. You see, when we understand who God is to us, and how intimately God seeks relationship with us, when we come to know the authority of God in and over our life, when we recognize that God is with us through every situation, when we experience his power to save and how wonderful his offer of eternal life is for a believer, when we indeed believe that eternal life is possible, then we should not be hesitant to surrender our hearts to our Savior. I met Sister Elsie some years ago. And for me, there was always that quiet assurance that God was with her. And that God would see her through whatever challenge would come her way. With a spirit of contentment, Elsie trusted her Lord and God in his grace and mercy and the loving care of her family. That which has kept her to age 92. I do believe that the 139th Psalm ministered to Elsie through the changing scenes of her life as she quietly accepted how God was working his purpose out for her life. I believe that she understood that her Lord was always alert to her needs, never sleeping, rather watching over her day and night. I believe that she was comforted by the presence of her God and to carry her through and assure her that all was well and there was no need to fear. I believe that it was her faith that kept her in the care of her Lord. As we go through life, there is the reality that death is certain, though from a human point of view, its timing is not. And so while life lasts, while we all struggle with this uncertainty of when, we should note that like the psalmist, I believe Elsie in testimony of her confidence in God seemed to possess a fearless trust in God. And so in her life and in her living, she patiently waited on the Lord and Savior of her life with faith and with courage. Such confidence in God was the experience of Elsie simply because of the Holy Spirit in her life. Her heart was open to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It was the power of God in the heart of Elsie that was at work in her life. And that made the difference of how she responded to the grace of God toward her, her family, and her church family. The word of God, my brothers and sisters, assures us who desire to live in God's presence every day that they will someday enjoy that relationship of God the Father, with God the Father forever. Therefore, for us who remain, for us who feel the pain of losing a loved one today, for us who feel overwhelmed, 
Know that the God of refuge and strength knows what you are going through. As a matter of fact, the Lord himself grieves with us in times like these. And so he understands your needs. Not your need generically, but individually God knows what each of you needs in order to sustain your life and your faith in him. He is the Lord. He is the giver of life. And precious in his sight is the death of his saints. You see, believers are precious to God. And God carefully chooses the time when he calls us into his presence. Let us take comfort in that today. Let us face confidence in God today. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. The Lord has prepared a place for Elsie. And she is already safe in the arms of Jesus. I want to suggest to us today that just as she was active in the days earlier in the life of the church, that a part of Psalm 27 uh, speaks to us. One thing I ask of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. God has prepared a place for Elsie because he promised a place in eternity with all who believe. And she believed in Jesus. She was faithful and loyal to the cause of Christ. She was committed and dependable. And so we are trusting Jesus to receive her with the words, well done. Thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master. We are closing this chapter of her life. And so I commend these words to us. The hymn writer says, Forever with the Lord, forever in his will, the promise of that faithful word, Lord, here in me fulfilled. With you at my right hand, then I shall never fail. Uphold me, Lord, and I shall stand through grace. I will prevail. So when my latest breath breaks through the veil of pain, by death I shall escape from death and life eternal gain. Once more, my brothers and sisters, hear that resurrection word, the shout of victory, forever with the Lord. Amen. So let it be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And amen. In this moment of quiet reflection, just pour out your hearts in love to the one who is with us in this place. 
thanking him for the gift that he has lent us through Elsie and trusting him that in the days ahead he will continue to be with us to help us through this time of pain and separation covered in his precious blood we know that he will be with us in every situation and thank him and ask him to be the lord and savior of your lives for christ's sake we pray amen shall we stand and turn with me to page six of the order of service as we say together the apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ his only son our lord he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our prayers of thanksgiving. Praise be to you, O God, our Father, who created us in your own image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, our Lord and our God, who have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers and are now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. All praise and glory, blessing and honor, thanksgiving and worship, be to you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We bless your name for the life of Elsie Doreen Johnson, whom we today lay to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and blessing her life has brought to others. For her service to her generation, according to your will. And for every happy remembrance of her life. We bless you for your mercy and goodness, which have followed her all the days of her life that now the trials of this world are over and death itself is past. Receive her into your perfect kingdom and bring us with all who have lived and served you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We rise to sing the hymn, Angel Voices Ever Singing, Round Thy Throne of Light.
give the commendation eternal God who have made us all and hate nothing that you have made and have given your son for our redemption we commend our sister Elsie Doreen to your perfect mercy and wisdom eternal rest grant unto her and let perpetual light shine upon her together we say the prayer that our lord has taught us our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen and amen. Our closing hymn in the service of thanksgiving for the life that God gave to Elsie Doreen Johnson. We sing together the hymn, and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood?
the church say amen and amen. Receive the benediction. Now the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Please remain standing as the body leaves the church.
we know that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We know that if this earthly house of our tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. Since our sister has departed out of this life, an almighty God in his mercy has taken her to himself, we therefore commit her body to the ground, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, earth to earth, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, From henceforth blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Let us pray. O merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, raise us up, we pray, from death of sin to the new life of righteousness, that when we shall depart this life, we shall be found acceptable in your sight. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant to the bereaved consolation and faith in this time of distress and trial, the blessed hope in the coming of your kingdom, the sustaining grace in the fellowship of your people, and steadfastness in the service of your name and the doing of your will. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Support us, O oh Lord, all the day long of this troublous life. Until the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant unto us safe lodging, holy rest, and peace at the last, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. Love of Jesus, Sing 
and shout to victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory shall the toys of life repair and we all, and we all get to heaven. Oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory onward to the prize. Onward to the prize before us, soon His beauty will be whole. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all, when we all get to heaven, day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, sing and shout the victory. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we shall see it afar. For the Father waits over the way. To prepare us a dwelling place there. And by faith we shall see it afar, for the Father is over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet, in the sea, I am God. We shall meet. Shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sea by and by. In the sea by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall sing. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melodious song. Our spirit shall sorrow no more. Our spirit shall sorrow no more. Not a sigh. Outside for the blessing of rest. In the sweet, in the sweet, by and by, by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. In the sweet, by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. To our bountiful Father, to our bountiful Father. We will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gifts of his love and the blessings that hallow our days. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Right on. 
Safe in the arms of Jesus, safe on his gentle breast, there by his love or shadow, sweetly my soul shall rest. Corroding fear, safe from the world's temptation. Sin cannot harm me there. Free from the blight of sorrow. Free from my doubts and fears. Only a few more trials. Only a few more tears. Safe in the arms of Jesus. Safe on his gentle breast. There by his love or shed or shaded. Sweetly my soul shall rest. Jesus, my heart's there with refuge. Jesus has died for me. Firm on the rock of ages. Ever my trust shall be. Here will I wait with patience. Wait till the night is over. Wait till I see the morning. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Uh, we'll sing the first hymn again, sing the wondrous love of Jesus.
I know you are. Okay. 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 Derek. Thank <laughs> you. 
history of clothing, the experience with the benediction, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We go in peace and the God of peace goes with us. Amen. <laughs> you have to get yours. You, you have to get yours. Yes. Huh? Yours. Yes. That, 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 that was your you <laughs> 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 saying, yeah? Yeah. I've had one of those. Lord bless you. And keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you. His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Amen.